Hello, gentlemen. We are going to take a quick look at a very common uh, circuit configuration where we have both a series and parallel uh, component to our circuit. So here's the setup. Uh, we have R1 here, and this is obviously in series with the other two resistors. These two resistors, when the switch is closed, will be in parallel, and we'll talk about uh, this switch being open and closed here in a minute. <clears throat> uh, one of the homework problems that I assigned, or classwork problems that I assigned, is actually pretty much identical to this problem. Uh, first thing we need to do is set a condition, and that is that all these resistors are equal. Okay, so R1 is equal to R2, which is equal to R3, and for for the sake of convenience, those are all equal to R, and you'll see why that is useful later. <clears throat> okay, you also note that I have written voltages here. I haven't shown voltmeters, um, but we could do that. Uh, so if you were measuring the voltage across each of these components, we would have the voltage of the battery, V sub zero, and the voltage across our first, second, and third resistors given by V sub one, V sub two, and V sub three. Seems fairly rational. Uh, again, I have not shown the voltmeter though. All right, so let's talk about switch open. When the switch is open, uh, R3 is not going to receive any current because it is not present in a loop. We need a closed loop to complete a circuit. So R sub 3 will not be included in our initial analysis. All we need to look at is R sub 1 and R sub 2, and or resistor 1 and resistor 2, if you prefer. And what we have here is a basic series circuit. And luckily, series circuits are very easy to analyze. Uh, when the switch is open, then we have R total is equal to the resistance of resistor 1 plus the resistance of resistor 2. As they're both equal to R, we substitute in R, and we get a total of 2R. So very straightforward analysis. Okay, so let's talk about Kirchhoff's laws for voltage uh, first. We'll talk about current in a minute. Basically, what Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's law says, and this is in your data booklet, is that the voltage through any loop will have a total sum, sum of zero. Okay, so this is Kirchhoff's law for a loop, and what we have here is a loop. Perfect. Okay. So the way this works is we start with V sub zero, the voltage of our battery, and I gave that a positive designation. As we go around the loop, we are going to subtract the voltage of every component, okay? And what we will then get is a total voltage of zero, okay? So the negative voltages that you see down here are because we're subtracting these voltages uh, from the voltage of our battery, okay? And when we do that, we'll get a total voltage of zero. So this is Kirchhoff's law for voltage, uh, the basic version. Now, <clears throat> a student asked, why does the voltage, uh, the total voltage in the circuit appear to decrease when we increase the resistance of the wires? Well, uh, if you imagine this wire from point, what we'll call point A to B here, if you imagine that this wire has a very small resistance, then what we need to do is consider that it's consuming a very small amount of the available voltage according to Kirchhoff's law. So, and this is, this is true of all of our wires. So what that means is there is less voltage available for our components, for our actual resistors. Uh, <clears throat> all wires have resistance unless they are uh, superconductors. So if you have superconducting wires, then you don't have that problem. However, superconduction super can only occur at very low temperatures. So at room temperature, you would not expect that to be uh, something that's going to happen. And for IB physics, you generally assume that the resistance of your wires is zero, okay? Uh, unless you're told otherwise. 
<clears throat> it is very low, to be fair. Okay, so that is our open switch analysis. Now we're going to take a look at the switch closed. So the key point here is wherever resistors are in parallel in a circuit, their total resistance can be added to the other components in series, okay? So in other words, what happens is R2 and R sub three here, we basically combine those into one kind of virtual resistor and that virtual parallel resistor is in series with R sub one. Okay, and what that looks like is our first equation here. So total resistance in this circuit when the switch is closed is going to be um, essentially equal to series resistance. And what I mean by that is if we take R sub one, the, the resistor that is always in series and in both cases, switch open and switch closed, and we add sub one, R sub one to <clears throat> the parallel resistance, the total parallel resistance of R sub two and R sub three. And to find that, we go to your data booklet and we pull out your equation, which is a little different than what I've written here. Uh, your data booklet has uh, this equation, R tote is equal to one divided by R sub one plus one divided by R sub uh, two, and we can add as many resistors as we would like here. I don't really like uh, using this particular equation because um, I don't like the total resistance is given uh, as an inverse. So I just uh, <clears throat> invert both sides of the equation by using this negative one exponent there. Okay, so if we raise both sides of the equation to uh, the negative first power, then we get uh, the inverse of parallel, the inverse of the inverse of parallel resistance, which is parallel resistance. Okay, uh, again, we can add as many resistors to these brackets as we would like or need to. Generally in IB physics, I think you're only going to have to worry about two at a time. Generally, uh, there may be some exceptions, but probably not usually. Okay, remember that all of our resistors have an equal resistance, so we can substitute R sub two and R sub three with R, the value that we've given for general resistance. We then add our fraction. And at this point, I should mention that a lot of students make a mistake adding fractions. So. Um, <clears throat> if you're not so familiar with adding fractions, you may want to add a few for practice uh, in your calculator or on paper because it's really important that you don't make a sing, sing, uh, simple mistake here. So one common mistake here would be uh, to write that the total uh, inside the bracket there is 1 divided by 2R. And that is not, not, not the case, but a lot of students will do that. Okay. Uh, we then take the inverse of 2 divided by r, and we get r halves. Okay, so this is our total parallel resistance. Now, to solve for total resistance, uh, we just then add parallel resistance to our resistor that it is in series with the parallel uh, resistors, and that is r sub 1. And again, we substitute uh <clears throat> parallel resistance is r halves r sub one is equal to r and what we find is that we have three halves and this almost exact problem is in the problem set that i assigned for you <clears throat> so what does kirchhoff's law look like under these conditions well it looks very similar to kirchhoff's law previously except that instead of a uh, phi sub two uh, we have voltage parallel and voltage parallel is going to be given uh, just by the parallel resistance. Okay, so you can calculate the voltage across these two resistors uh, by using the parallel resistance. So that's another reason why it's important to be comfortable um, analyzing a whole circuit like this. The other thing, the other useful thing is uh, you can calculate the entire current to the circuit if you know all if you know the voltage and total resistance, okay? So the current through the circuit is just going to be equal to uh, total voltage, 
which we'll call v sub zero, divided by total resistance. Okay, so if you want to know the current uh, flowing through the battery, there you go. Useful stuff. Okay, well, let's just get rid of that. All right, <clears throat> the last thing we're going to look at is Kirchhoff's law for current into a junction. And what I mean by a junction is, uh, if you look here, up here, we, and we imagine that this switch is closed, we're going to have current going into, um, <clears throat> let me move this. We're going to have current going into this intersection of wires. And then we're going to have current coming out of that intersection. Okay, so we'll call this I sub zero, and we'll call this I sub two because it's going to resistor two, and we'll call this I sub three because it's going to resistor three. So Kirchhoff's law simply states that all of the current going into the junction must equal the sum of current going out of the junction. Another way that you could express that is um, that all of the current in a junction is equal to zero. So here, again, this is in your data booklet. Um, <clears throat> and in your data booklet, it is expressed as the sum of current going into a junction is equal to zero. Okay, so we give a positive value to the current going into the junction, and we give a negative value to the current or currents coming out of the junction or going out of the junction, and that will give us the sum of zero every time. And once again, energy is conserved. Anytime you see the sum of a thing equaling zero or uh, uh, yeah, just that. In physics, you're you're basically dealing with a conservation of energy law of some sort, and both of Kirchhoff's laws for voltage and current are exactly that. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully, that makes good sense to everyone. If it does not for any reason, then please do not hesitate to get in touch and. Have a great day.